going to say, by the way, that you absolutely were spot on in your comment because nobody, nobody wants to see parties fighting and we were completely mad. And I said this at the time to get rid of Boris Johnson and uh, it has not helped one little bit, has it? No, no, it, it absolutely hasn't. And, and it is, I find it fascinating, this kind of public psychology, that if you look back, it was... Oh, Boris was... It was untenable. There was no way he could have stuck around. I mean, you'd kill for opinion polling like that now. Exactly, and the Labour Party, as you quite rightly said, were terrified of him. And, you know, <laughs> Keir Starmer is no Tony Blair. And the idea that people would actually vote for Labour, you know, is only half credible now. Uh, it wouldn't have been credible at all if we'd kept Boris. Look, some of the other suggestions, perhaps slightly less controversial than me asking you whether or not we should sack our current Chancellor, was that ditch the plan to ban new petrol and diesel cars. I mean, this all ties into something that I suspect would probably play quite well on the doors. Your views? I think we're going to have to, you know. But certainly the 2030 deadline is looking more and more untenable. Look, there's battery development going on, which when it comes in, when the new technology comes in, will maybe make electric cars more suitable for the UK. But you know what? Um, we said when we were talking about this policy. Mind you, I have to say, it was actually Boris's policy because he yeah. was a very, very green prime minister. But there was always the constant hope that there would be new batteries developed. Well, so far, they're in research and development, but they're not available yet. And people don't want to have range anxiety and they haven't got the time to sit, you know, trying to find, mm. first of all, a, a, a recharger that works and then sit around for about half an hour at least until something operates and you can drive your car off again. No, so, yeah, indeed. I'll... What? But you, you, make a, you hit down there on a really interesting point, which is that Boris Johnson uh, arguably didn't necessarily try to enact a lot of the policies that many people assumed that he might do. And, and, and certainly when it came to the green stuff, how green he was and wanting to him, where people would have still picked themselves up and gone out and, and voted for him. Whereas now that we appear to have, you know, the adults in the room, as it were, Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor, don't worry, I won't get to comment on him again. Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor, Rishi Sunak there, you know, these people who've got, you know, very nice smart suits on and they look like they're, they're proper adults, and people don't like them. I hope you've noticed, by the way, I never wear suits. I've had approval by the Speaker of the House of Commons that I can wear sort of a jacket, not this jacket, because this is a bit sort of uh, too modern for the House of Commons, maybe, but I'm allowed to wear a jacket and matching chinos, so mm. it's a sort of suit. Uh, I just thought I would say that. But you're absolutely right, um, you know. But I do think we have got every chance, you know, to do well at the next general election because... I'm afraid people don't actually get Keir Starmer. Yeah. I mean, when Keir Starmer was saying, you know, his lovely slogan that we're going to get rid of the class ceiling, mm. who thought that one up? We're going to get rid of the class ceiling uh, with uh, teachers. But then when he was asked, well, all right, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to match their pay demands? He mm. went, uh, no. Yeah. And this is it. Again, another crucial point here from Sir Michael, which is that if... If at the next Keep election, saying that. if at the I next election, it. right, we end up with a situation where the Labour win a stonky majority, I, I would argue the most disappointing thing for Conservatives will be that it wasn't really Labour what won it, it was the Tories what lost it. Is this another way, though, that the Conservatives could claw it back? If they went into the next general election, as Lord Frost suggests, with promising a referendum on European human rights law um, and whether or not we should, we should get out of the ECHR. If they said, look, if you vote Tory in the next general election, we promise you a referendum and immediately enact the result of this referendum on the ECHR. Could that be something that Rishi could do to just keep people on the hold? Well, well, first of all, it nearly always is governments what lose it and never mm. is oppositions that win it. I mean, even with Tony Blair, that was the case, to be honest with you. Look, on the EHCR thing, yeah, absolutely right wrong that they interfere. But you know what? It's not the EHCR. It's the <coughs> ruddy law that Tony Blair introduced uh, not that long ago, which actually enshrined it certain aspects in law. Sweden 
isn't subject to all the things that we seem to be subject to, but yet they're into the EHCR. Mm. It's because of our domestic laws. And what we should do, not make a promise, we should actually deliver before the next general election a change in the EHCR Act, mm. one that was brought in by Tony Blair and has absolutely nothing to do with the EHCR that we joined way back in the late 1940s, early 1950s. What do you make of this latest attempt, supposedly by the Lib Dems and the Labour Party, to now really go after people who are... So they've got Boris, that happened, you know, that would, took a long time to actually come to fruition, but they got him, and then they properly got him, essentially, by getting him out of, of the House of Commons. And then now they're coming for, oh, quite a few people, people who said it was a, a kangaroo court. Are they coming for you? They certainly are coming for me. They've named me. They have named me. Can you believe that? I am in the targets of Ed Davey. Oh. And you oh. know what? I'm not in the remotest bit frightened. Uh, you know, I don't think... I don't, it hasn't even got the support of the Labour Party. There's about five or six of them on sitting there mournfully. I think this lady, famous lady, Wendy Chamberlain, who nobody's even heard of, even in her own household, who has actually proposed this amendment, uh, I would be amazed if it gets five minutes of support, apart from Ed Davey, who, of course, is known as Archibald uh, by that wonderful sketch writer who's often making fun of me, so I can say that, uh, Quentin Letts. Oh, there you go. Good stuff. But this does appear to be... Uh, look, I'm going to kind of finish how we started, really, Sir Michael, if that's OK, which is about this idea of there it's having been a... Me, Sir Michael. It, I find being called Sir Michael cringe-making. Uh, fair enough. All right. I just quite enjoy it, actually. But uh, I would dine out on it. I would dine out on it. If it was if it was me, I would be making everybody everybody say... I'm surprised I don't maybe people say B.A. Ons after my name. In fact, we should put that in the uh, in the titles. But uh, um, so, but, but is this a well-laid trap that the Tories have fallen into, uh, uh, which was get rid of Boris, the biggest, electoral, the biggest electoral winning machine that the Conservative Party had? Obviously, Liz Truss didn't work out that well, 44 days. But there was long enough to pull it around. Now they've had Rishi Sunak in... And now they're trying to eat out essentially the core of the of the Conservative Party, as it were. Why have the Conservatives allowed themselves to walk into this trap? Because some of my colleagues are incredibly naive mm. and don't learn the lessons of history. And the lesson of history is that nobody likes divided parties. And love him or loathe him, everybody had a view about Boris. Everybody knew who Boris was. And there are very few prime ministers, even Tony Blair, who didn't have that. I think the last prime minister who people either loved or loathed and everyone had a view about was Margaret Thatcher. Mm. And, you know, nobody can say that she wasn't a winner. Ten years in government. So uh, Look, but we are where we are where we are. We, we, you are where you are. night behind Rishi and Rishi delivers, we have every chance of winning the next election because Keir Starmer is no Tony Blair. Yeah. What, 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 happens, what happens if he loses all of these by-elections? What, seriously, I mean, because you just said there about, you know, the party's got to stay united, and I understand all of that, obviously, but then do you unite behind someone who clearly is going to not win at a general election? Do you, do you unite behind failure then? By-elections don't mean anything. Look, many years oh. ago, uh, we lost a by-election before I was the MP, uh, the MP for this area, Litchfield, where I'm speaking to you yeah. from now, it was called Mid Staffordshire in those days, we lost the by-election. And you know what? I won it back. I mm. won it back in a year and a half later. Um, so I think most people, mm. maybe not the fools who quickly got rid of Boris, but most people, most MPs, realise that by-elections are not actually a measure of how well you're going to do in government. And uh, as I say, I won it back in 92 and the Conservatives won in 92. If everybody had panicked because of, uh, you know, because of getting, yeah. because of what happened in the by-election, then, which they did actually, we'd, but if they really panicked, we wouldn't have won in 92. So I think most okay. MPs realise we've got any sense that actually by-elections, and you never know, we might win. You never, you never know. You never know. Yes.